we have to find the area between two curves and they've already told us it's inside the first polar curve. So the fact that it's inside, this is the outer bound. So it's inside of this one and outside of that one. So I'm gonna use a capital R for the first, the big one, and a little r for the second one. When we use this area formula, it's the same beginning and end values, but we're gonna have big R squared minus small r squared d theta. Now I'm not gonna do the calculus part of this, the actual integral. We'll just get to the bounds are really important right here. So again, you got your big R is the big R, and then little r is that little r. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now I use Desmos to graph this. Uh, you don't have to use Desmos, uh, and if you don't use Desmos, we're still gonna need the intersections here. So if you don't have access to Desmos, how do you intersect? You set one equation equal to the other, big R equals little r, five cos theta equals three minus one cos theta. So add cos theta to both sides. 6 cos theta equals 3. Cos theta equals divide by 6. 3 6 is 1 half. Now I got lucky with a nice fraction. Maybe I would have gotten 1 third, in which case uh, the best you could do is take cos inverse of both sides. Uh, when I do this, uh, there's going to be two solutions. So cosine is the x value of 1 half. So I have two points in the unit circle. The uh, one in quadrant one is pi over three. The one in quadrant four is negative pi over three. You may not have a nice, if you have, for example, one third right here, you're gonna have to just use cos inverse and then find the decimal uh, value of these two angles. And it's gonna be a little more annoying now, is theta going from negative pi over three to positive pi over three? Is that the case? Or is theta gonna go from positive pi over three? Now I can't go to negative pi over three because you can't have a smaller value here, but I could go to the other name of this angle, which is five pi over three. So I have to decide now which of these two is happening. Uh, the way we're gonna do that, there's a few ways to do it. Uh, and now if I go over and shade on this circle, the difference between these two, one of them would be inside here, and the other would be this. Ah, first of all, I should talk about how do I know which one's the red, which one's the blue, which one's the big, which one's the small. Uh, there's kind of an easy way I was able to do figure this out. Think of this point at the origin. Only one of these two curves ever hits the origin. Which one allows the radius to equal zero? It's this one right here. Little r can never equal zero because cosine goes between negative one and one, and doing three minus a small number is never gonna equal zero. So it has to be this first equation is the red. So let's go ahead and label that. The first one is the red. All right, so that's the red curve. We want to be inside, inside the red, outside the blue. So we actually want this area over here. So you can tell here's pi over three and negative pi over three and we have to decide which of those two it's on. Now, looking at the graph, you can probably tell it goes negative pi over three to positive pi over three gets you all this area. So we're going to choose this. So you're all set to get this integral, but I wanna talk now about how to figure it out that this is the interval you want and not that one. There's actually a really easy way to tell. I'm gonna pick an easy theta value inside each interval. So I think the easy one in here is zero. 
and the easy one in here is probably pi. All right, what are we gonna do with these? Well, I wanna be inside the red curve and outside the blue curve. What does that mean? Big R should be the big and little r should be the little. So what is big R of zero? I scroll up and down, let's, let's just rewrite these. Big R is five cos theta, little r is three minus cos theta. So big R of zero is five cos zero, which is five little r of zero is three minus cos zero, which is three minus one, and that's two. So in this one, the big R is the big value, and the little r is the little value. So that's how I know this is the interval we need to use. Let's go ahead and compute the, do the same thing for the second one and see why it won't work. Now we're plugging in pi, our big R of pi, 5 cos pi, cos pi is negative 1, so this is negative 5, little, oh come on, pen, little r of pi is 3 minus cos pi, cos pi is negative 1, so this 3 minus negative 1, or 3 plus 1, is 4, and now the big value is smaller than the small value. Which is, of course, what we don't want, so this is bad. So we're not using that interval. And now you can go ahead and compute right here because you have alpha and beta, your beginning, ending, theta values.